Hello there. Honestly, you Star Trek fans are the funniest in the comment section sometimes. I had to chuckle at 1657. We're watching you, watching Kirk and Mendez, watching the Talosians, watching Pike and the Crash Survivors. Now, this show is set in the year 2200 or 2300, I cannot remember. And I'm here in 2023, watching these fellas watch these events that I have already watched in 2023, despite it being set in the 2200s. We're just on a different time plane here, ladies and gentlemen. We're just built different here. <laughs> uh, it's absolutely hilarious. Anyway, guys, what's going on? My name is Ellie Moses, a 23-year-old law and film shooting from Sydney, Australia. Shooting is shot, baby. Yes, I am in a good mood today. Seattle Seahawks won. Arsenal won. We did a good workout this morning. Some guy just delivered my Culture Kings delivery with the most euphoric energy I've ever seen in the delivery person ever. And I just hit my mic. And it's just positive vibes all around. But yeah, we are here to react to episode 12, I believe, of Star Trek The original series titled uh the menagerie part two now part one was actually pretty pretty good um and I know it's an episode about, you know, saving money for the studio, but it actually works really well, especially having seen the events as well. I, f I feel like even though it kind of ruins the experience a little bit, not like n seeing the events of the cage, I like how it's actually inserted in having seen um, all the events play out. It's pretty, pretty clever. But yeah, we're here to react to part two now of the Menagerie. Let's waste no more time. Let's get into the reaction. Let's smash this thing and let's go. I didn't want to leave too much of a time gap as well between each upload, so I really wanted to get this Personal out as quick as possible. Especially for a two-parter. I find it hard to believe the events of the past 24 hours. Or the plea of Mr. Spock standing general court-martial. How do you plead to the charge of unlawfully taking command of this starship? How Spock could do this he refused to explain. But there before our eyes, actual images from 13 years ago. <laughs> of Captain Pike as he was when he commanded this vessel of Spock in those days, and of how the Enterprise had become the first and only starship to visit Talos IV. Someone should mesh up my reaction with Kirk's reaction they seeing these events. a distress signal from that planet, and discovered there, still alive after many years, the survivors of a missing vessel, only to find it was all an illusion. Don't stop me. Don't let him stop me. It's your career and Captain Pike's life. You must see the rest of the transmission. As you saw before, Captain Pike had been knocked unconscious and captured by the Talosians. Yo, the Talosians have good cameramen, man. <laughs> they understand framing techniques, um, <laughs> slow panning, everything. <laughs> They're pretty good. <laughs> you know what's funny as well? Like, it makes it look as if, like, twice the effort was put into this episode. Having two captains of the Enterprise and then having to do all the set design for this planet. When, like, you notice that it's... <laughs> a uh, scrapped episode that sort of inserted it. It's really smart in the end of the day. I know it's to save money, but it's done really well. <laughs> Can you hear me? I remember that shot in the episode of the cage. It was beautiful. Was Even if it's just a matte painting and wallpaper, it's great. Come. Imagine seeing that in the Hurry. 60s, you're like, wow. <laughs> it's deserted. They'll be with some perhaps food. With the sky being different shades of purple and pink. Please, we must hide ourselves. I was in a cage, a cell, in some kind of a zoo. It's going to be hard to commentate over the events of the cage because I've already done it for a whole episode. So I'll only insert the footage of the actual cage episode when necessary if like, I'm talking over it and things like that. We can reconvene later. Then they care about the captain. They want him back. Alive, sir. I demand to know why. If you'll be patient, sir, the answers to your questions... You're forgetting you're on trial, Spock. <laughs> you will answer all questions put to you. My answer to your question would be quite unbelievable, sir. I regret we'll have to wait and see it there. I love the tensions between the commanders and our sort of like the ones convening in the court because we went last episode with sort of Mendez and... um uh, uh, Freaking... 
what the heck is happening here? Kirk asking all the questions and sort of controlling the courtrooms. But now the hierarchy has changed a little bit. Even though Spock is the one on trial, he's sort of the one dictating the entire event at the moment. He's sort of the ones telling him what's going on. He's telling him, you know, now that Pike is tired, they're the ones controlling the images. We need to reconvene later. He's the one telling him when to reconvene later. Like, it's sort of like the hierarchy has changed and even sort of like the levels of eye contact and positioning of the characters. Um, Spock has the high ground at the moment. I know it's a style was but he has the high ground at the moment and it's just completely changed the hierarchy has shifted a little bit once spock has entered uh has sort of explained this whole sort of story to them in terms of like the telosians controlling everything they're seeing at the moment they're in their territory um they cannot do anything at the moment and kirk is the one sort of even more receptive to spock now he's listening to him he understands that he's telling the truth <laughs> And they, they understand that they, they can't do anything about it. <laughs> and the strangest trial evidence ever heard aboard a starship. <laughs> From the mysterious planet now only one hour ahead of us, the story of Captain Pike's imprisonment there. Are you real? As real as you wish. Oh, no. oh Pike, man. No, that's not any answer. You know what? It would be actually crazy if we see the actual Pike at the end of this episode. Like they create an illusion to make his they made me out of dreams. condition go away. But it's dressed you in the same metal fabric they wear. Well, I can wear whatever you wish. Seven, six, five. I remember they went to town on this sort of entrance and gateway here. <laughs> Nothing happened, but that was because it was an illusion. <laughs> Yet again, no epilepsy warning. You can even see on screen the whole, the rainbow flashing lights. <laughs> <laughs> I like how when they transition back to sort of the projection room as well, the colors are a bit more washed on the footage than the actual events playing to the audience. I don't know if that was deliberate, but... Then you were captured as breeding stock. I reckon we get the Star Trek version of the Death Star and nuke Talos IV out of orbit. Completely. As a Starfleet decision. Some of the production design, um, especially in this world here, I left the to my reminds me of the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I don't know, I just get those type of vibes. You can even stay if you want. But we're not here, neither of us. We're in a menagerie, a cave. <laughs> oh. I can't help either one of us if you won't give me a chance. You know what would be a nice poetic ending? And I'm just predicting here um, that the whole menagerie, that's how you pronounce it, and the cage that Pike initially escaped from, he goes back into it at the end of this episode because of his condition. And it seems like, I forgot this woman's name, but because they have sort of like a similar condition in terms of like she was old and frail, but she was um, damaged by the crash of the ship as well. Um... She was portrayed as this beautiful woman with the illusion. Now, I reckon the same thing might happen to Pike at the end of this episode. And he will stay home on Talos 4 forever. Um, in terms of, like, it'll be a nice poetic ending. And their beauty is returned together. Like, as they were in this episode. Um, and it's just ironic that he ends up becoming in the cage he once tried to escape. I could be wrong. You guys are smiling and laughing while I'm saying this. But it's just a prediction. I feel like it'll be, like, a neat ending. I like that style of writing as well. You told me once. They used illusions as a narcotic. They couldn't even repair the machines left by their ancestors. Is that why they want us? To build a colony of slaves? Stop! I remember she was in That's some the of the post credits. <laughs> That's the green Orion slave girl. They're like animals. Vicious, seductive. They say no human male can resist them. Ah, oh, come on, Kirk. You can, buddy. I've seen your mental strength. Mendes? Probably not. <laughs> and we cut to commercial break. And Strange we're back to bring you this new episode past. of Star Trek, the original series. Now the Telosians, planning to breed a society of human slaves, tempted Captain Pike with the Earth woman they held in captivity. And as she appeared to him in many forms, each more exciting than the last, Pike was beginning to weaken. I love Kirk's narration over the events, especially having seen the episode as well. <laughs> Yeah.
you know, I don't know if there's any viewers watching this that short, saw the show for the first time in the 60s and remembered this episode, but I think the experience would have actually been quite surreal and a little bit exciting watching an older um, sort of captain of the Enterprise deal with these situations, but having sort of uh, Spock and old, like the same crew member that's, you know, been with us on the journey for the past 10 episodes, because I'm excluding um, the first uh, Menagerie episode, but like we've been accustomed to Kirk and Spock and McCoy, and then we're also seeing a different doctor, we're seeing a different um, captain, but we're also seeing the same second in command in Spock deal with these events. It would have been like a pretty cool experience, and maybe some viewers would have taken a liking to pike himself maybe they would have been like oh i want to see more of him i want to see him interact with kirk more um i want to see if there's a potential for him to return and things like that like it's cool seeing this like in, like i'm just trying to portray it as me seeing it um through the lens of a viewer in the 60s for the first time having been accustomed to kirk spock and mccoy for the first 10 episodes of the series and even yeoman um and seeing number one as well um a different woman sort of uh than uhura i think it is um just being on the on the on the on the hull of the ship um on the bridge sorry um it would have been a pretty cool experience seeing that um it's just something very different obviously i know it's a scrapped episode but they've worked it in so well it seems the telosians have deserted you gentlemen a moment please surely mendez can't like well mr spock verdict signal you want me to wait captain please it's your life now at least a chance for life keep talking about life mr spock a chance for life how he's a prisoner cage a zoo specimen living the illusions that amuse his keepers no captain there's more to it watch guilty yes or no captain Yes. What? I must also vote guilty as charged. And you, Captain. It's two on one now. It doesn't matter, but like. Guilty. Fuck. As charged. 3 0. Clean sweep. Damn. Spock got swept. Damn. Make contact, number one. They kept us from seeing this, too. We cut through and never knew it. <laughs> Captain. As you see, your attempt to escape accomplished nothing. I love how it's still in the 4 by 3 aspect ratio, but because we're seeing it from the view of the projector, you can see the edges um, circulated off here still. Like, we're still seeing it from the view of the projector and even, like, the same coloring as if we're watching it in the projection room. I like it. It's a neat touch. I want to contact our ship. You are now on the surface where we wished you to be. It's such a well done practical de-aging effect right there with the editing as well. Like, really well done. See what I can't with you. This is the female's true appearance. They rebuilt me. Everything works. They had never seen a human. Maybe they, they can no rebuild guide. Ike probably now they that they've seen humans. Together. I think I said it in the cage. She got the Yennefer treatment. It was necessary to convince you her desire to stay is an honest one. Except she got reverse Yennefer. Yennefer went from like that to beautiful. She went from beautiful to Yennefer. <laughs> like... All decks, prepare for hyperdrive. All decks are ready, sir. Engage! Don't tell me the Telosians created end credits as well. I'd actually laugh if they put end credits. Okay. <laughs> I was just joking there. Were like... Commodore, don't you think that... Mother... What? Nah, Mendez has got to be there. I know... What you now seem to hear, Captain Kirk, are my thought transmissions. The Commodore was never aboard your vessel. No, that's Cap! His presence there and in the shuttlecraft was an illusion. 
Wait, I thought they could only create illusions within their range because Kirk and the Commodore left from the planet, right? And they were chasing the Enterprise. And then the illusions only started to project when they were sort of in the range of Talos 4. So unless they've increased their range of illusion... Wait, wait, what? Mr. Spock had related to us your strength of will. It was thought the fiction of a court martial would divert you from too soon regaining control of your vessel. Captain Pike is welcome to spend the rest of his life with us. I knew that was going to happen. Unfettered by his physical body. The decision is yours and his. These brothers need to be stopped. I don't care. Talos 4 is suspended this occasion. No action contemplated against Spock. Prohibition Yay! Think best. Signed, Mendez, J.I., Commodore, Starbase 11. Wait, so Mendez does actually exist, right? But he's on the Starbase. I'm guessing. But his appearance from boarding the ship with Kirk was an illusion. Care to take Captain Pike to the transporter room? See you along. Thank you, sir. For both of us. Mr. Spock, when you're finished, please come back and see me. I want to talk to you. This regrettable tendency you've been showing lately towards flagrant emotionalism. I see no reason to insult me, sir. I believe I've been completely logical about the whole affair. Captain Kirk? <laughs> Neat poetic, like, ending right there. He returns to the cage in which he once escaped. You know what's funny? I think that was like the reuse. Captain Pike he has an illusion, and you have reality. They still haven't they fixed. find your way as pleasant. It's been 13 years and they still haven't fixed the damage that was done to their, um, the boulders or like sort of like the entranceway <laughs> to, their, to their place. <laughs> I'd like to see Kirk interact with the Talosians. Like properly. Because <laughs> he has the attitude and wit to sort of like, I don't know, he has, I, I just like his facial expressions and I feel like he'd give the Talosians a hard time and that would be amusing to me because they, they have some arrogance um like in their personality the Talosians I don't know if you guys agree with me but like they're so cocky in my opinion they just give off that vibe and I feel like Kirk is the perfect person to sort of um combat that arrogance of the Talosians but yeah that was a fantastic two-part episode and like you guys mentioned in the comment section it is i believe the only two-part um sort of like episode of star trek the original series um and it was great having seen the cage i guess like you know what i kind of feel like it's a better experience having seen that episode before um obviously hindsight is a wonderful thing and i um i would have liked to see my reaction without having seen the cage before and seeing these events play out but i feel like it's i don't know i think i would have enjoyed i like i don't know how i would have reacted having not seen the cage and seeing this um but i feel like i don't know i kind of feel like i would have enjoyed it like, I, I enjoyed it better having seen the cage, if that makes sense. Like, I just feel like, ah, uh, Pike ended up getting his happy ending with Vina in the end, and they returned to breed on Talos 4. Um, and, yeah, I, I still, I, I'm not sure if that's the last appearance of Talos 4, um, because it is forbidden, and it seems like this is, like, a once an exception. Um, but it's interesting to see. I don't know if they, they have pretty good range with their illusions and it makes you wonder um i don't know what else in this show can become an illusion with those guys i'm interested to see if they sort of resurface again in the series um but knowing kirk he'd 
stay as far away from that planet. <laughs> we don't want any more illusions, but I'm interested to see if this episode is referenced as well later on in terms of like Spock's actions and his tendencies. Um, this episode or like these past two episodes, I wonder if that's mentioned again um, by Kirk, especially in the following episode. But I don't know, with the structure and placing of episodes this season and sort of like the Corbin might maneuver being the first episode ever recorded and the first appearance of McCoy. Um, and yeah, um, that was placed at like episode 10, I believe, or nine. Um, it's interesting, um, to see how they reference other episodes, but I'm not sure if it's like, this is the moment here where we start to get a bit of structure. Um, I know it's sort of like one-off, um, space exploration, um, and problem of the week type episodes, but I wonder if it's going to be mentioned again, this one, especially with Spock's relationship with Kirk. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy my reaction to the Menagerie part two. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been Boy the Most. Take care. God bless. Peace.